Hey everyone, in this tutorial, we will be going through another OpenSeas Navigator example. This time around, we will be modeling and analyzing a 2D frame with one bay and two stories. To begin, we set the OpenSeas path and locate the OpenSeas application file. Then, we will create a new model with a template. Select the 2D frame option. In this example, we will have two stories and one bay. The story height is 13 feet and the bay width is 30 feet. Remember to change these dimensions into inches for the input. Also, make sure that the boundary conditions are fixed. Now, click generate and the frame should appear. Now, we assign SP constraints. For nodes 1 and 4, we restrict all three degrees of freedom since they are fixed supports. The rest of the nodes will automatically be moment resisting since we have defined them to be fixed in the beginning. We will also assign MP constraints. Create a new equal DOF constraint and name it floor 1. Set the master node to 2 and slave node to 5 and constrain the X direction translation. We create another equal DOF constraint and name it floor 2. Set the master node to 3 and slave node to 6 and constrain the X direction translation. We also need to assign nodal masses. We go to assign node masses. Select nodes 2, 3, 5, and 6. Since we have 180 kips of force on both sides of the frame, we divide it by gravity and we get approximately 0.5 for the mass in the X direction. Next, we will define the material. We define a uniaxial material and add a new steel 01 material. We will name it beam and give it yield stress of 36 KSI and a hardening ratio of 1%. Similarly, we will create another steel 01 material and name it column. Now, we will keep the yield stress at, at 50 KSI and change the hardening ratio to 1% again. Now, we will define a line section. Go to define sections, line sections. Next, add a fiber section. We call it beam and select AISC from the add patch drop down menu. We will call the patch name beam and choose the material type to be beam. Now, you are required to input an AISC section name. To browse available sections, we can click Design, AISC, Show Available Sections. We want to browse the W24 sections, so click Show. From the list, we will choose to use W24 by 62 for our beams. We now go back to the previous window and input W24 by 62 as the section name. We now set the number of fibers along the depth and thickness of the web to be 6 and 1 respectively. Similarly, the breadth and thickness of the flange will be set as 6 and 1 respectively as well. We leave the rest of the parameters as those are used for concrete structures. Just go on and click add to find the material, the fiber section. We will now define a line section for the column using the same procedure. Add a fiber section, name it column, and add an AISC patch. Name it column, choose the column material type, and an AISC section. In this case, we would like to use W27 by 94. Like before, we set the number of fibers along the depth and thickness of the web to be 6 and 1 respectively, and similarly with the breadth and thickness of the flange. Now, both the beam and column line sections should be defined. Now, we can define a line element. We add a force beam column element and call it beam. Also, select the beam section type. We do the same thing with the column. 
we add another force beam column element and call it column and select the column section type. Next, we assign elements. Go to assign element types. For elements 5 and 6, we assign them as beam elements. For elements 1, 2, 3, and 4, we assign them as column elements. Finally, we will need to assign geometric transformations to the elements. Go to Assign Element Geotrans. Select elements 1 through 4 using a colon and select P delta. Also, select elements 5 and 6 and select Corotational. The frame is now fully defined and is ready to be subjected to loads. We will now be looking at three cases, gravity, pushover, and earthquake loading. We will begin first with gravity loading. Click define, load pattern, and add a plane load pattern. Name it gravity. Now go to assign element loads and assign the load on elements 5 and 6 and select gravity load pattern. For this example, we will assign a uniform load of negative 1 kip per inch. Next, we will define a load pattern for pushover. Click define load pattern and add another plain load pattern. Name it pushover. Now, go to assign node loads and assign the pushover to nodes 2 and 3. Select the pushover load pattern with fx of 0.5 kips. We set the display options to view the loads for pushover load. The loads should appear in red. Finally, we will define the earthquake loads. Begin by going to define time series and add a path file. We will call it EQ. Before proceeding with the other inputs, we should locate the time series file and find the time step. Locate the file and open it in WordPad. This part of the file designates the time step to be 0.01 seconds. Now we go back to the previous window in OpenSea's Navigator and input the time interval to be 0.01 seconds. We also need to browse the value file name, which is the same file that we have just opened. Also, set the load factor to 1.5 times 32.2 times 12, which is also gravity, and we add. Next, we define the earthquake load pattern. Go to define load pattern and add a new uniform excitation load pattern. We will name it EQ and change the time series to EQ. And we add. Now that the loads have been defined and assigned, we can define the recorders. Go to define recorders. First, we will modify the deform shape recorder and make it record both displacement and acceleration. Also, we will use the eigenvector recorder, but no modification is necessary. Then, we will add a beam column element recorder. Give it the name All Beam Column and select the local resisting forces and chord rotations. First, we will look at the gravity case. Go to Analyze, Define Analysis Case, and create a new case. Name it Gravity, and select the gravity load pattern, as well as the deform shape and all beam column recorders. Also, remember to set the number of load steps to 1. Write the OpenSeas input file for gravity, and run the OpenSeas analysis. 
Next, load the OpenSea's results for gravity. Now we can see the animate response for the gravity case. Click the animate response icon and like before, select the cubic and set it to 100 and push start. This way, the deformation should appear more clearly. Next, we will look at the pushover case. Go to Define Analysis Options. Add a new analysis option and name it Pushover. Set the analysis type to Static. Constraint Handler type to Transformation Method and Integrator type to Displacement Control. Now, set the controlling node to 3, controlling DOF to 1, and first displacement increment to 0 0.01 inches. Also, set the solution algorithm type to Newton, and convergence test type to normal displacement increment. Finally, set the DOF number type to RCM, and system of equation type to band general. Now go to analyze, define analysis case. Add a new analysis case with the name pushover. Select the pushover load pattern and deform shape and all beam column recorders. Set the analysis options to pushover, which we just created and set the number of load steps to be 1000. Now, write the pushover input file and run OpenSeas. Load the results for the pushover analysis case. And this time, we will choose to plot the response. Click plot response on the toolbar and set the X axis to deform shape and displacement. In this case, we choose to look at node 3, so select node 3, and DOF as 1. Set the y-axis to deform shape and time. The curve will show the elastic region and when the yielding occurs. Now, we will look at the Eigen case. Go to Analyze, define Analysis case, and create a new case named Eigen. Select None for load patterns and Eigenvector for recorders. Set the analysis options to Eigen default. Next, set the number of eigenvalues to 2 and set the solver type to fold gen lapack. Now, we write the input file for Eigen and run OpenSeas. Now, load the Eigen analysis case. We will look at the mode shape, so click the mode shape button on the toolbar. Select the mode as 1 or 2 and set it to 100 to see the mode clearly. You can press plot and you should be able to see the mode shapes. Finally, we will look at the earthquake case. Go to analyze, define analysis cases, and create a new case named EQ. Set the load pattern to EQ and select the deform shape and all beam column recorders. Also set the analysis option to transient default. Now referring from the time series file that we have opened in WordPad, we know that we have 3107 load steps with 0 0.01 time step increments. We will also add some damping as well. We click damping parameters, add new damping parameter, and click calculate. Without changing any other parameters, input the ith mode period as 0 0.874. And we add this case. We can now write the EQ input file and run OpenSeas. Load the EQ results and we will look at the animated response. Keep it as linear and set it to 1000. 
The building should show its response to the earthquake based on the data we have inputted. We would like to also plot the response. Click plot response icon. Set the x-axis to EQ and time. Also set the y-axis to EQ and G acceleration. Now click plot and the response is plotted. We can also click start to see the plot generate with respect to time. We can also plot the displacement of the node due to the earthquake loading. Press clear to clear the plot first. Set the x-axis to default shape and time. Set the y-axis to default shape and displacement. We would like to see the response of node 3, so we select node 3. Also, we specify the degree of freedom, which is 1. Now click plot to see the response. That's the end of this tutorial. Hope this helps you familiar with some of the useful features of OpenSea's Navigator. Thank you for watching.